Good evening. This is the July, excuse me, this is the June 10th, 2021 meeting of the St. Mary's County Board of Appeals located in the Commissioners of St. Mary's County meeting room of the Chesapeake Building, 41770 Baldridge Street, Leonardtown, Maryland. I'm Chairman Dan Ikniowski, and we have four other board members with us tonight. So we have met our minimum requirements for a quorum, and we will proceed with the meeting. Public meetings are now open to the public. Also, in lieu of personal attendance, citizens may just listen to the meeting on their phones, but not speak to the board by calling 1-301-579-7236 and then use the access code 963443-POUND or view the meeting remotely on channel 95 and YouTube. Zoom teleconference will also be available for applicant use. If any non-in-person citizen would like to participate by talking to the board during the public testimony, please call the following number, 301-475-4200 extension 123, and we will repeat that uh, prior to public testimony. When you call this number, Ms. Sherry Young, recording secretary, will ask your name, address, phone number, and email. In other words, this is a virtual sign-in sheet. Ms. Young will then place you in line on hold after I announce that I am opening the hearing to public testimony. I will open the meeting to public testimony after the presentations and the testimony by the applicant and representatives have been completed. For both in-person calls, call-ins, you will be asked to state your name and address for the record. I will then swear you in. You will have three minutes to ask your questions or make your comments directly to the board. Your comments will be recorded and heard by those of us in the Chesapeake building. Zoom participants, Channel 95, and on YouTube. Uh, After the public comment portion of the meeting is over, the case will return to the board for discussion and decision. So now for tonight's meeting, I'd like to ask the board members to to identify themselves, starting on my right. Good evening, Wayne Medensky. Lynn Delahaye. And I'm Dan Ikniowski. John Brown. Good evening, Rich Richardson. And the attorney for the board tonight is? Kevin Norse. Also, we have the supporting staff that will be in attendance in the the room tonight. Harry Knight, (coughs) Land Use and Growth Management Deputy Director. Uh, Stacy is not here tonight. No, she is not. Stacy Clements is not here. Neil Murphy, the assistant county attorney, is? He was here. He was here. I thought I saw him come in. He walked out. I guess we bored him. We got his boss here. (laughs) And Dave Weiskopf. Also in the adjoining meeting control room is Amy Carter, St. Mary's County video media producer. Uh, In the adjacent Savage Conference Room, public phone calls to the boards are being received by Sherry Young, the board's recording secretary. And we'll go through the uh, appellants, applicants, and interveners and representatives as we get to those cases. We also have uh, our alternate. Excuse me, we also have Guy Bradley, our alternate member, sitting with us tonight. The, we have three public hearings tonight. The first case is Magruder and Beauchamp property, VAAP 171104. Case number two will be the Dent property, VAAP 182361. And case number three will be Lexington Park Ford, Ford phase three, VAAP, one three one zero two seven before we start the hearing for viewers at home you will be able to see the staff and applicants presentation on channel 95 or youtube and these presentations are being as as these presentations are being shown you can also see all the documents that have been submitted for these cases by going to board docs i guess i'll ask harry knight will now demonstrate how to locate and use board docs Thank you, sir. <clears throat> so first, you'd want to go um, open your internet browser and go to www.stmarysmd.com. And in the um, upper right-hand corner, you'll find the tab for board docs. 
click on the tab, <clears throat> it will open. I don't open it in advance because I like the public to see it does take a little bit of time. Don't think you click the wrong button. There it is. So it is loading. <clears throat> I've run out of things to say. Here it comes. Yes. So <clears throat> you can pick whatever um, board county commission here on the right. Um, when it's a um, particularly current meeting, it's going to be here in the middle. And here's our Board of Appeals June 10th. And it's um, on the June 10th, because I clicked the June 10th, we're going to click View Agenda here. And then you see the agenda on the left. And um, so, for instance, our first case, I click on that. And all of the documents associated with this case have been uploaded and are available for viewing at the click of a button. Thank you, Mr. Knight. Um, we will now hear case number one, and I'll ask Harry if he will stand and take the oath. And Harry, as you may be aware, this will be for all three cases tonight. Yes, sir. Please stand and raise your right hand. Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. You may proceed. Excuse me. Okay, St. Mary's County Board of Appeals public hearing June 10th, 2021. Variance for the building permit number 17-1104. This is a variance from schedule 32.1 <laughs> standards. I want to emphasize to the board, <clears throat> I can't emphasize enough, this is not a critical area variance. Okay? You're going to see the house is in the critical area. This is not a critical area variance. Okay, the legal ad and property posting was done. Um, letters were mailed. The owners are Catherine Magruder and James Beauchamp. The location is 43844 Avon Way in Leonardtown. Map 61, grid one, parcel 249, lot 19 of the Landon subdivision. Z um, the land use is rural preservation and the zoning is rural preservation district. It is a mere 6,250 square feet with an existing house with accessory structures. So the proposed um, improvement is to replace the existing house. And the um, proposed development is modest enough that it is actually exempt from stormwater management and soil conservation standards due to being less than 5,000 square feet of soil disturbance. It's currently under health department review. You might have noticed this is a building permit number 17. That means they actually applied for this permit four years ago. And I don't think I'm characterizing it um, incorrectly when I say <clears throat> their challenge has been meeting health department standards on an old grandfathered lot seeking to replace the house. So here's your location map. It's down um, a, on the Potomac River. Zoning map is RPD. The site plan, and I'm going to zoom in for you. So <clears throat> the particular hardship here is buildable area. I want you to notice the, um, the purple hashed. Um, the, the number 50 is um, the zero of the number 50, if you can see that, is in the buildable area. So, so their buildable area is barely big enough for a porch if you don't grant variances from the various setbacks. <clears throat> so they are in the critical area. It is zoned BMO, which means that they can do development activity in the 100-foot buffer without a variance on the condition that they move the house as far away from the shore as possible to the extent that they must seek zoning setback variances if that will help. And that's why we're here tonight, to seek those zoning setback variances. So the house does comply with the right side setback. They are asking for a variance to the left side setback. 
and they are asking for a variance to the front yard setback. They could ask for a greater um, variance, a smaller setback to the front, except that the well is in the front of the house in order to keep it separated from the septic system, which is on the water side of the house. And so um, they, they could ask for a greater zoning um, encroachment on the front yard, but that would only make it harder to get health department approval. And I would ask if you have any questions before I move off this slide. Board members have any questions? I know you, what you said with the premise. I just want to clarify for the record, there was a input from the critical area, correct? Absolutely, and their, their letter says that um, this complies with the BMO standards and therefore a variance is not required. Yes, from the I, just, critical I just want to area. get it kind of read in, okay? Yeah. Okay, no other questions, I'll move on. So <clears throat> being a standard variance, not a critical area variance, the standards are that um, <clears throat> the board must find that because of the particular physical surroundings such as exceptional narrowness, shallowness, size, shape, or topographical conditions of the property involved, strict enforcement of the ordinance will result in a practical difficulty and the conditions creating the difficulty <clears throat> are not applicable generally to other properties within the same zoning classification. And the purpose of the variance is not based exclusively upon reasons of convenience, profit, or caprice. It is understood that any development nece necessarily increases property value and that alone shall not constitute an exclusive finding. And the alleged difficulty has not been created by the property owner or the owner's predecessors in title. And the granting of the variance will not be detrimental to the public welfare or injurious to other property or improvements in the neighborhood. And the character of the district will not be changed by the variance. The proposed variance will not substantially increase the congestion of public streets or increase the danger of fire or endanger the public safety or substantially diminish or impair property values within the neighborhood. And the variance complies as nearly as possible with the spirit, intent, and purpose of the comprehensive plan. Any other questions? No, I do have some questions. Um, do they have to elevate the house? They, <clears throat> I don't recall um, that they, I don't think the house is in, the, certainly the property is in the floodplain. Oh yeah, no, I'm looking at the topo lines here. So the, um, the nine foot um, elevation above um, sea level, if you will, is approximately 50 feet from the house. Wow. And so the house um, is not in the regulated floodplain. And, and I, I read that they were abandoning the current septic system and they're putting in a bat system. What, what is that? <clears throat> That's the septic tank. So they, um, what's required in the critical area and has been since I want to say approximately 2008 or 2009 is anytime a um, building permit for a house in the critical area requires any septic improvement, the first improvement is to replace the septic tank, conventional septic tanks, which really just hold it temporarily and let the effluent move to the drain fields. So um, BAT stands for best available technology. So it might be different tomorrow because there might be something better available. But, it, but yes, they have to replace it. Another common term is a nitrogen removing septic tank. And, and there's no sewer to hook to down No, there? no, the, the drain fields are actually shown here. <clears throat> uh, oh, is there any public sewer? No, there's not. Okay. No, so the drain fields, the existing drain fields are being left intact and it's the septic tank that's being replaced. Okay, okay, that's, that's all I got. A question, sir, I see in the, in the write up the rules front yard and side yard and rear yard. Who determines which is the front yard? <clears throat> Def defini definition in the zoning ordinance. So while um, people with waterfront property commonly like to refer to the waterfront as their front yard, as my grandmother did, um, <clears throat> the zoning ordinance defines the front yard as that property line which abuts the public way. But this is a private way. This is a private road. 
it is a private road available to the public to traverse on their way to visit friends, neighbors, relatives, pizza delivery people. But it is a private road. It is, right, it is not owned and maintained by the county nor the state of Maryland, that is correct. So you say the front row or front of the house faces the water then? No, um, not by zoning, <clears throat> but perhaps by owner's preference, they may want to say the front faces the water. So that goes back to my question. Who determines which is the front lawn, the, the front yard? <clears throat> for zoning review purposes, the um, Department of Land Use and Gra Growth Management, in accordance with the Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance, the definition of front um, property line that we measure the front setback from is that property line that abuts the public way. I mean, I can open the book if you want me to read it verbatim. I, I read the book and I, I couldn't understand it. That's okay. why I asked the question. <clears throat> there, there's more interesting things, as Mr. Beauchamp knows, when it comes to talking about right-of-ways and property lines, but it, it, I don't want to belabor the hearing. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of the staff? Okay, the applicant. Who will be representing the applicant? Mr. Beauchamp? Yes, sir. Okay, well, come on up. And before you sit down while you're standing, would you please raise your right hand? Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Very good. Please have a seat. Thank you. you. Proceed. Thank you all. It's good and to see Mr. you this evening. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I am going to be putting your slides up and you tell me when to advance. Very well. Thank you. First, I'd like to thank Harry and his team for helping us shepherd this through the process um, and putting together a really good demonstration of what we're trying to do. I did prepare uh, some slides here. So what you're looking at here uh, is our little neighborhood. It is the Landon subdivision, as Harry mentioned. Um, it's a pretty small neighborhood, and all of the lots are 50-foot lots. <laughs> so... Um, a couple of the houses have been built on two lots, but most have not. Let me back up and introduce my wife, Kathy Magruder, here. I'll mention her a time or two as we go through. So that's the two names on the application, Magruder and Beecham. You can change there, Harry. Thank you. So this is the detail of the site plan. Uh, it's not as colorful as one that Harry showed. Um, as noted before, that heavy dotted line you see there is the footprint of the existing house. Your question about the floodplain, sir, the finished floor on that existing house, and I think what we're proposing is around 11 or 12 feet above. So we're, we're a good ways up. That bluff, you can see the tight topo lines there at the bottom of the lot. Um, we're hemmed in with this small lot. There's not much place to go to build a modest home. And that's what we've been endeavoring to do here. The basic block of the house is 26 by 30. Um, we do have the, the porches in front, and there are some um, extensions out from that main block of the house, and I'll get to explain those in a minute. But we have maintained the, um, the setback of the existing house in that um, northwest corner or the upper left there, the 15 feet. And as you can see, that's the house next door is about 10 feet from the property line, so we're contributing about 60% to the total distance between the two houses there. Um, the, um, the back of the house, or I'm sorry, the front of the house, uh, facing the upper right uh, to, the, to the northeast, that's very similar to the existence. And as Harry mentioned, we're kind of hemmed in there by the positioning of the well. So we can't go any farther back that way. We can't go any farther the other way for the replacement septic tank. Um, by the way, the health department did approve our existing septic tank, but they have encouraged us to replace with the newer technology and we're happy to do that. That makes the right sense. They, they had a sequence of events they wanted us to do to keep the old septic tank, but they went out, opened it up, looked, tested it, and approved it, but we're gonna change anyway because it seems like the right thing to do. Um, on the river side, we've moved about as close that way as we can. We've left the existing drain field and there's room for a septic reserve on that side. Um, we're sort of squeezed in. They'll, you know, if you go to squeeze a balloon, it only can go one way and that's 
what we're looking at there. If you change pages, please. So family history. Back in 1957, Kathy's grandfather and his six brothers each bought a lot in this area. They all bought 50-foot lots. This is the last standing of the original houses, um, and we're intending to, to make that uh, a newer home. So our two um, grown children grew up here, spent summers here. Kathy spent every summer of her life down here. In 1989, uh, Kathy's grandfather passed, the property passed, and in October 2017, we purchased the property from the three heirs with the intent to replace it. And as Harry noted, in 2017, that's when we started the process here. It's still a family compound. Kathy's brother and his family have the house next door to us, behind us, or across from the front door is um, Kathy's parents' house. And on the other side of that is Aunt Lessie's house. Now, Aunt Lessie isn't really our aunt, but everybody knows her as Aunt Lessie. I'm not sure how to describe how she's related, but she is. Uh, next page, please. This is the- Is she watching TV? To she might be that? watching TV, that's right. Um, this is the county's own GIS map, and um, that's my crude coloring applied. The orange are the legacy homes, the homes that are still there that, as originally constructed, and the purple ones are replacement homes. And my objective here is to show you that we are endeavoring to build a modest house. What we're proposing is below the average size of replacement houses and is in by no means any grandiose type of structure. I think it's also interesting to note um, some of the other setbacks in the neighborhood you know, the house farthest to the upper left is right up against its property line. The purple house um, there sort of in the middle is right on the property line. Uh, there's other houses that are really close. So setbacks are an endangered species when you have 50 foot lots. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> if, would you mind backing oh, up please? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, I wanted you to see the, you know, the, the private road there, the 25-foot road that goes down beside our property. Um, and also, I wanted you to see that the, the property across that private road, their property extends further away from the river than ours. And the reason that's significant is that's where their gate is to get into their property. So they don't use any of the private road beside our property at all, except for parking. They don't need that to get to their property. It just, there's, there's, there's no other means or need for access from that area. Yeah, please, thank you. So this is what we have. That's the little fishing cabin that Kathy's grandfather built. Um, you'll notice in that bottom picture on the bottom, there's a whole lot of concrete surface there. Even though we are building a house with a larger footprint, we're actually reducing impervious cover on the site because we're pulling up so much of what was concrete, different structures, and getting rid of them. So overall, we are reducing impervious cover, which is consistent with uh, the objective of the comprehensive plan, et cetera. If you'd change, please. <laughs> this is what we're planning to build. Um, the elevation in the upper left of the page is the side of the house that faces that private road. And I want to point out that the areas that protrude out and make us a little bit closer um, is the fireplace that is there sort of between those two door looking windows and the stairwell. And on the front of the house, which is the lower right hand, the protrusion is there in the farthest right of the ground floor only. Those areas aren't full height. We've tried to diminish them so they're not as imposing. You'll notice we've used a modified hip roof. This is also to make the house look and feel smaller from outside. So you don't have a two-story wall and a gable. It's just a two-story wall and then the hip roof helps the house feel smaller than it might look otherwise. Next page, please. These are our floor plans. Um, and first, let me apologize for the scale of the two. I didn't realize this until after I had sent it down here, but I messed up. The bottom wall 
of the second floor where it says bedroom two on the right, that actually does not extend that far back. I, I put that picture in bigger than it should be. It actually lines up with the inset wall on the ground floor. So the, the ground floor plan on the left at the bottom of the page, you can see that little two foot extension that comes out in bedroom number three. That's only a first story extension. <coughs> There again, we're trying to minimize the feel of the house. If you look to the left side of that first floor, you'll see the fireplace there and the stair protrusion going out. That's what's causing us a little more grief than we might have otherwise. This is a view of the private road. It, it really is kind of funny to call it a road because it's only used by pedestrians, people walking down to the river or for parking. Uh, this page and the next page will show that it's just it's just a little grassy area. It's not really a thoroughfare at all. It dead ends into the river and uh, no one has any need for any access to it. Um, we'll want to think about indirect impacts, not just not just direct impacts, but uh, indirect. If you turn the page, please. So this is the view from Kathy's parents' house, their porch. So as you can see, that's our house over on the far right, the existing fishing cabin. Enlarging it a few feet, extending it a few feet, um, really isn't going to dramatically impact their view of the river or their enjoyment of their property. As a matter of fact, they are, they're so excited that we're doing this. But you know, I know you want to look at indirect impacts on properties property owner agnostic. Um, so it's really not going to be impacting their view. So what it really means is you'll have a brand new air conditioner for them to move over to, right? That's right. That's right. Next page, please. So these next two pages, um, this is just sort of a, a redo of what Harry told you. The words might be a little different, but it's basically the same <laughs> considerations that you're challenged to address in considering for variances. And we feel like that, that in each and every one of them, um, we're passing the test on what it takes to, to, uh, to ask for a variance from you. And the, the next page goes right through to number seven. So on the last page, if you would, Harry, please, um, I bring back up the detail of the site plan just to show you what we're contemplating um, we've done our best to try to put a modest house on there. We have three bedrooms for Kathy and I and our two grown children. They've grown up there. They view this property like we do as part of the family. It's the property itself is part of the family and we're trying to treat it that way. Um, you know, to be blunt, something has to change with this property. The house that's there is really fundamentally unusable. Um, and so we're, we're trying to do the right thing and replace it as best we can trying to um, evolve it the best way we can. The neighbors have all been notified of this, not only with the certified letter that we sent out, but through the course of the couple of years, we've shown them our plans as they've evolved and they've all been excited about it. And I, I can't imagine any of them raising issues with it, but I think that all applaud us and, and move us forward on that. So with that, um, I'll answer any questions if you have any, sir, ma'am. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Hi, yes, sir. I, I see you have two entrances. To, which is the main entrance to the house? Well, I'll, uh, I'll confess that uh, early on, the interpretation was that the, side, the long side of the lot was to be considered the front. And so we started with the plans along those lines, and that's why that door is there. A later interpretation um, actually matches the way we will use the property and the way everybody uses the property where the front faces away from the river. So um, I would bet that we're gonna use the door <coughs> facing Kathy's parents' house 90% of the time. Okay. Well, it's important to have two entrances, that's for sure. Yes, sir. Exercise. I understand that, but I just wonder which is, which is the main one. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? No, I don't know. Excellent presentation. So let's hold on until we get to see if there's any public testimony. Um, <clears throat> yeah, if all questions are done, you, you'd be ready to open for yep. the public. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I'm going to suggest you open it to the public in the room first, okay. and then we'll check for calls. 
that, that we will do then. Does anybody in the room have any comments for or against the uh, proposal here tonight that you've just heard? Okay, hearing Mr. none, I would say we go to the phones. Okay, Mr. Beauchamp, um, you're actually done, right? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good presentation. Board of Appeals. Sherry, do we have any callers? Thank you very much. Thank you. So the meeting, uh, the public hearing was open to public comment. There is no one in the room wishing to speak and no one has called in in that um, amount of time since you announced that it was open to public comment. Very good, then I will close the public hearing portion of the meeting and ask if the board members have any other items, any questions, comments? I, I think I think the letter that was written is a very well written letter that it, it's explained everything. I, I, I think it was a good idea. And now, now do we feel that all of the variance criteria that were listed have been met then? Yep. Uh, yeah, I think it was a good presentation. And from the pictures, which I really appreciate, it does show that uh, the house is older and certainly <laughs> could use some updating. Yes. <laughs> Probably a good air conditioner too. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm good with it. Very good, I'll take a motion. In the matter of VAAP-17-1104, having made a finding that the standards for granting a variance and the objectives of section 24.3 and schedule 32.1 of the St. Mary's County Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance have been met, I move to approve the variance request for reduction of the front and side setbacks to replace the existing dwelling. Second. Uh, Mr. Mr. Medinsky. Yes. 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 Thank you very much. Um, very much. Let's see what else I can find here. See, all Re those years on the planning board up in Virginia taught you something, right? Uh, just a second, sir. An order reflecting the board's decision will be prepared by staff and signed by the board within 60 days. A 30-day period follows from that date the order is signed during which any ag aggrieved party may appeal the board's decision to the circuit court. The recording secretary will mail you a copy of the order once it has been signed. Very good, good presentation and good luck to you. Thank you. Good luck. It was a very good letter you wrote. Your letter was very, very good, one of the best I've seen. Thank you. you answered all the questions. And now we will move on to case number two, the Dent property, VAAP 182331. And Harry, I guess we've given you the oath, so if you'd go ahead with the staff presentation. Very good. <clears throat> so this is a variance case. This one is a critical area and a standard variance. The standard variance in this case is um, to encroach on the minimum required 100 foot buffer for hydric soils contiguous to a non-tidal wetland. Um, permit number 18-2361 Dent property um, and those two sections were 71.83 and 71.5.2. 71.83, the specific critical area of variance is um, disturbance to the buffer. Okay, so the property was posted and the mailings were sent. The owner is Anita Dent. The property is located at 45971 Shanty Point Lane, Piney Point. Map 69, grid 2, parcel 182. The land use is rural preservation. The zoning is rural preservation district. The overlay is limited development area. And the property is approximately half an acre 23,958 square feet. It's currently occupied by a single family dwelling. Here's the aerial view of existing conditions and you can see the modest structure here. You can tell by the aerial image, the um, existence of wetlands um, to the um, upper right quadrant. And of course the green is the um, creek. So the proposed conditions is to um, replace it with a house, deck, and driveway. The health department and MedCom have approved the building permit. The um, 
Department of Land Use and Growth Management is working out some design um, standards with the um, applicant regarding floodplain. This house will be required to be elevated. Um, the, this property is in the regulated floodplain. Um, once again, the um, soil disturbance is under 5,000 square feet and therefore there are no additional stormwater or s sediment erosion control standards required. The Critical Area Commission did comment um, in a letter April 3rd of 2020. This is an older application, that's why that letter is that old, but nothing has changed. And they confirmed that <clears throat> this year. And then what's interesting, you're gonna see, um, according to our official maps, the property is not fully encumbered by wetlands, and yet the Maryland Department of the Environment um, visited the property and found that the property is entirely wetlands and shall be regulated as non-tidal wetlands. Here's the location on St. George's Island. There's um, showing the zoning map and the property in blue. So here's St. George's Creek um, and the tidal wetlands <clears throat> resulting in the property being really entirely in the critical area buffer. Now here's the wetland map. <clears throat> the existing structure is the gray square to the left. And so according to these maps, the property is not fully encumbered, but the property is um, entirely hydric soils, which per our standards and this map would cause it to have a 100 foot buffer um, from the non-tidal wetland. And um, as I said, though, MDE declared the property entirely wetland and they have applied for a um, wetland disturbance permit. Here's the site plan. And so here's the um, detail of the site plan. So once again, a, a small house with little disturbance replacing an existing um, small structure. Okay, so the mitigation required will be 6,456 square feet. That's based on 2,152 square feet of permanent disturbance <laughs> times three plus 2,340 square feet of temporary disturbance minus a 416 square foot credit for lot coverage removal, bringing it to a total of 8,380 square feet. Mitigation plan um, will be reviewed and approved prior to issuance of the building permit. So standards for granting a variance in the critical area is that special conditions or circumstances exist that are peculiar to the land or structure involved and that strict enforcement of the critical area provisions of this ordinance would result in unwarranted hardship, and that strict interpretation of the critical area provisions of this ordinance will deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties in similar areas within the critical area of St. Mary's County, and that the granting of the variance will not confer upon an applicant any special privilege that would be denied by the critical area provisions of this ordinance to other lands or structures within, whoops, sorry, um, within the critical area of St. Mary's County, and the variance request is not based upon conditions or circumstances that are the result of actions by the applicant, and the granting of the variance will not adversely affect water quality or adversely impact fish, wildlife, or plant habitat within the critical area, and that the granting of the variance will be in harmony with the general spirit and intent of the critical area program. The variance is the minimum necessary to achieve a reasonable use of the land. And again, that variance is for disturbance of the buffer because the property is 99% critical area buffer. <clears throat> now the standards for granting the variance to the non-tidal wetland buffer uh, is a standard variance, not a critical area variance, and the findings must be because the particular physical surroundings <laughs> such as the exceptional narrowness, shallowness, size, shape, or topographical conditions of the property involved Strict enforcement of this ordinance will result in practical difficulty, and the conditions creating the difficulty are not applicable generally to other properties within the same zoning classification. And the purpose of the variance is not based exclusively upon reasons of convenience, profit, or caprice. It is understood that any development necessarily increases property value, and that alone shall not constitute an exclusive finding. And the alleged difficulty has not been created by the property owner or the owner's predecessors in title and the granting of the variance will not be detrimental to the public welfare or injurious to other property or improvements in the neighborhood and the character of the district will not be changed by the variance. 
and the proposed variance will not substantially increase the congestion of the public streets or increase the danger of fire or endanger the public safety or substantially diminish or impair property values within the neighborhood. And the variance complies as nearly as possible with the spirit and intent and purpose of the comprehensive plan. And I do apologize to the board. I didn't stop and ask if you had any questions about the yeah, maps. The second variance is for? The disturbance of the minimum required buffer from the non-tidal wetland. And so just to back up, <clears throat> The green on this map is the non-tidal wetland. The orange is the tidal wetland. The 100-foot buffer is measured from the tidal wetland. And um, so that runs 100 feet this way, covering the entire property. And then because the property is encumbered by hydric soil, the non-tidal wetland buffer is increased to 100 feet. So now it's 100 feet in the, you know, as well. So. I mean, they're overlapping buffers, mm -hmm. but it just is a technicality that it is two separate regulations that they're seeking relief from. Thank you. The board members have any other questions? No. My usual question. I just want, for the record, the critical area commission had no objections. They had their statements of what should be done, but they Correct. did not come on board like sometimes they do. That, that is correct. They said, uh, you know, should the board find that um, they meet the standards, three to one mitigation for permanent, one to one mitigation for temporary. Yes. Okay. Another question on the the, the letter dated uh, April tw April 9th from the Maryland Department of Environment. The letter is not signed. Let me bring up that letter. Oh, for, uh, hmm, interesting. See, I'm looking at a different letter, May 22nd, 2019. I'm looking at April 9th. Okay, from the Maryland Department of the Environment. All right. <clears throat> no, and this is the critical area letter. I'll have to go to board docs for that letter if you like. It looks like attachment six. Yes, let me go to board docs. And what was the date? May 11th, 2019? Uh, April 9. Oh, thank you, sir. <clears throat> oh, well, that, no, that's the same one I brought up, May 22nd. Oh, oh, oh. He says oh, there's an April second. 9th. Nice try, Dave. So this is the one that's signed. Mm -hmm. The one that's not signed. Uh, Mr. Richardson, would you want to um, share what your concern is while I bring it up? Is it valid if it's not signed? Well, let's see what it says. I'll give you my professional judgment once I see it. So it is attachment six under... Yes, attachment six. Oh, well, I'm, I'm seeing attachment six um, as a wetland map. Um, this, this is part of the uh, applicant's Oh, I'm sorry. Presentation. Part of the applicant's presentation. Okay, well then, I think we'll have to, um, well, I mean, I can bring that up. Get him off the hook. They're next anyway. Uh, here we are. I'll just jump ahead to that. Um, here we are. Second page. Right. I would say that this is not a letter. Um, this is a, I, I know they've put sincerely regulatory services coordination staff, and, and so there's, you know, who's going to sign that. But when you look at the beginning, this is, com this is a common document um, relative to a um, wetlands permit. See how they've um, assigned a tracking number and a permit number, and they've acknowledged that the application was received. So this will progress into that um, 
MDE approval to disturb the wetlands. So is, is it a valid document? Being a oh, I, I, yes, I would definitely not. Um, I, I personally would say this is proof that they have applied to the Maryland Department of the Environment and that the Maryland Department of the Environment has acknowledged receipt, assigned a tracking number, and, um, and assigned a permit number. Okay. Thank you. And, and if we were to go down quickly, so they've acknowledged it's for non-title wetlands division to review. And you will be contacted individually or jointly by the groups, so on and so forth. Please note your proposed project changes. So, I mean, I, we can leave it for the applicants to explain if they think it's necessary. But I'm going to take you to the top of their presentation, because if you have no more questions for me. No. Any more questions? Okay. We will have the applicant come up who will be speaking for the applicant tonight. And if you please stand, raise your right hand, and state your name. Michael Dennis. Michael. Okay. Um, do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Very good. You may proceed. Thank you. Uh, my name is Michael Dent. Uh, address is 45968 Shanty Point Lane in Piney Point. To clear up the last conversation while I was sitting in the audience. I have received approval of my permit through MDE as late as this morning. It's the wetlands permit. Yes, I have. I have received that. I just got to sign the check and mail that in tomorrow. I wanted to find the outcome of this meeting before I did that. But I spoke to them today. Miko Camp was a lady who did the review of it. And, um, and I do have that documentation with me if it's necessary to show. But I do have that from MDE. Um, just want to start. First of all, I'm nervous, and my wife's not here with me, and so just bear with me. We don't Flip. bite. <laughs> um, I've been coming down to this place at 45968 Shanty Point Lane for 53 years, and I've watched uh, the property next to this deteriorate my whole life. And we were able to buy it in 2008. The end of, and actually on my birthday, December 27, 2008, we settled and bought the property in question right here on 45971 Shanty Point Lane. The first thing that we did was to install a seawall, is what I would call it, or a marsh creation to stop the washing away of the land. And that's what I tried to explain in my pictures that I showed, that the person who owned it before, if you would go to the picture, please, Harry, um, he started the seawall back in the 70s when I was a kid. And, and you can see where it stopped. And eventually, the various hurricanes over the time, whether it's Ernesto or whichever one you want to call, wiped all that out. And so I know, just because I bought my dad's property, which is the house adjoining it in 04, that it was encroaching on our property. You know, I needed to do something to stop it or I was going to lose everything. And so we bought the property. I put the seawall in, just tried to stop it. And the marsh creations worked. It started growing back out, which is great. So that's working. And so then we can finally afford to, and I wanted to try to replace the cinder block home that's there. Um, if you want to go to the next picture or the next slide, Harry, that's what the point used to look like. And the picture's not a very good one, but there was pine trees out there. And there's no trees out there right now. There's that whole point is wiped out. It's probably 150 feet gone just in my time. Um, if you go to the next one, please. All those trees are, are, are gone. You can't see. Right now, I can see all the piers all the way down the creek standing at the foot of my pier. And it's just, it's just crushing me that it's just going away. Um, so I'm, I'm retiring this year, if you wouldn't mind. And so I put that's my marsh creation that I put in. As you can see, the trees and stuff are gone. And Right here in the bottom corner that you're looking at, that's all grown back out to those first set of rocks. And so it's working. It's growing it back out. Um, if you can go to the next one, please. This is just pictures of that. And then maybe the next where the house is, maybe number five. That's the old house that's there. That's when they put the grinder pump in in 94. It has never been hooked up to the property. It's never been hooked up. Um, the gentleman has never, the gentleman fell in the 70s and nobody, we cut the grass as kids. Um, I was able to buy the property in 08 and I can finally afford to do something. I've started this process in 18 
to, um, to build a garage there because I'm consolidating the home in Pomfret to this one here, and I want to move down there full time is what I'm planning to do. And I just I need the square footage. I've got two kids that have nothing but grown up here, and they've got families now. And the ones with babies can go in the apartment and make the noise there. Um, but that's that's what I've got. Um, I'm just here to see what, if you have questions for me. Do board members have any questions? No, no sir. No. No. Okay. It closes the testimony. I guess we'll open it to public comment. Anybody in the audience want to speak for or against the property, the proposal? Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Hearing none, do we have anybody on the phone? I will check. <phone rings> Sherry, the meeting has been open to public testimony. Has anyone called in? Thank you. Thank you. We'll close the public testimony portion of the meeting. Do the board members have any comments, discussion, concern? Um, that's been a good presentation again, and, and uh, I don't see any problems with what this gentleman has, has in mind. I think it'd be a good uh, My reaction is go for it. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Let me go for it. Very good. Do we have a motion? I'll do it. In the matter of VAAP 18-2361, having made a finding that the standards for granting a variance and the objectives of Section 24.3 and 24.4 of the St. Mary's County Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance have been met, I move to approve the variance request from Section 71.8.3 to disturb the critical area buffer and from section 71.5.2 to disturb the non-tidal wetland buffer to construct a single family dwelling. Second. Second, any discussion? Mr. Richardson, how do you vote? Yes. 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 Very good. An order reflecting the board's decision will be prepared by staff and signed by the board within 60 days. A 30-day period follows from that date the order is signed during which any aggrieved party may appeal the board's decision to the circuit court. The recording secretary will mail you a copy of the order once it has been signed. Good luck to you and good presentation. Thank you very much. Good luck. Okay, case number three. Uh, for tonight will be the Lexington Park Ford Phase 3 VAAP 2131027. Um, I guess we will now have Harry give the staff presentation for the project. Yes, sir. And I believe uh, Mr. Mike Fitzgerald has joined us by Zoom. Um, I'd like to try to get a sound check from him to make sure we're connected before we start. I'm here. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, we can, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. So now that we have um, a participant by Zoom, I'll be having to share everything on Zoom. <clears throat> okay. Can you see that, Mr. Fitzgerald? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. All right. So here we're for um, a pair of buffer yard variances for the 20-131-024 Lexington Park Ford Phase 3. It's a variance from Section 63.3 Buffer Yard Schedule 63.3.A. They're seeking to um, reduce the required 65-foot Type B buffer yard along Maryland Route 235 to a 30-foot Type C buffer yard, and to reduce the required 65-foot Type B buffer yard along FDR Boulevard to a 30-foot Type A buffer yard. The properties were posted and the mailings were sent out. 
the property is owned by Cody Holdings. Um, their agent was listed as Chris Longmore, but um, other people are, Mr. Page Wyro is here. Um, the location is at 22643 Three Notch Road, California, tax map 43, grid one, parcels, a, an amalgamation of parcels. <clears throat> land use mixed uses um, is, and high intensity is the land use. The zoning is high intensity mixed use. And the acreage, I believe, is a total combined 26.08. There, um, this particular part that isn't um, currently, well, it, it was not in the too far distant past an existing home. I believe that's probably been demolished by now. I could be wrong. The proposed conditions, though, of course, is to um, continue development as the um, auto dealership, um, construct additional parking facility for what the zoning classification use of 75 retail sales or service of vehicles. Um, agency reviews, of course, are ongoing through the technical evaluation process. Here's a location map showing where the property is located. This is your zoning map showing the mixed use high intensity. And the land use map. The existing conditions, um, this picture was taken in April of 2020. Uh, the property in question is adjacent to um, San Sushi Plaza, which you see on the right, and the wooded area um, that you see towards the bottom. I, um, I think I've got that correct, yeah. And so here's the site plan. Um, Route 235 is to the left. The future FDR Boulevard is to the right. And so this particular um, portion of the exhibit is to show the little bit of buffer yard that um, was not previously approved with the rest of the um, auto dealership permit because um, when that was approved, they did not own this portion of the land at that time. So it's just this little bit um, that when they constructed, they would like it to match the previously approved buffer yard. Uh, you, um, you see the red. Okay, <clears throat> and then this is the, um, what I'm gonna call the backside, um, where it will join the future FDR Boulevard. And the, um, the buffers there um, on the upper side along the Three Notch Trail, um, possible future um, right of way there, is the approved 15-foot BOCC buffer. It's labeled on their exhibit, and approved 50-foot FDR buffer. Those are not um, what they're asking for at this time. It, um, as I understand it, it's the proposed 30-foot type A on the opposite side of the future FDR boulevard. So here's our 63.3.A um, buffer yard standard chart from the zoning ordinance, just to give you a feel for what these different buffer yards are. And we can go back to that if you feel the need. And then here's the illustration of the various type A, type B, and type C buffer yards. Um, a close-up type A, so they're proposing a 30-foot type A, so they would be doubling the width, as opposed to a 65B and as opposed to a 30-foot C. So the standards for granting the variance because of particular physical surroundings, such as exceptional narrowness, shallowness, size, shape, or topographical conditions of the property involved, strict enforcement of this ordinance will result in practical difficulty, and the conditions creating the difficulty are not applicable generally to other properties within the same zoning classification. The purpose of the variance is not based exclusively upon reasons of convenience, profit, or caprice. It is understood that any development necessarily increases property value, and that alone shall not constitute an exclusive finding. And the alleged difficulty has not been created by the property owner or the owner's predecessors in title. And the granting of the variance will not be detrimental to the public welfare or injurious to other property or improvements in the neighborhood. And the character of the district will not be changed by the variance and the proposed variance will not substantially increase the congestion of the public streets or increase the danger of fire or endanger the public safety or substantially diminish or impair 
property values within the neighborhood, and the variance complies as nearly as possible with the spirit, intent, and purpose of the comprehensive plan. Thank you, Mr. Knight. Any questions? Yes, Mr. Uh, Mr. Knight, there, there's two variances. One on 235, I understand, but the one on FDR, is it the south side that I'm looking at is where the variance is? That's my understanding, sir. Okay. But on the north side, is it, that's not for discussion tonight. That's how I understand it. Of course, Mr. Wyro and the applicants um, can clarify. So it's important that they have their opportunity to speak and make sure that they request and obtain the variances that they desire, not the variances as I understand them. Okay, thank you. I may be confusing it this with maybe one of the other dealership ones that have come through over the years. At the time, I don't think the county had obtained their access for the FDR in, in one of our discussions in prior history. I take it when it's reflected here, this is the county property for FDR, correct? Mr. Weiskopf would be able to answer more definitively. Oh, okay. Oh. Happy to answer that, certainly, Mr. Brown. Um, what you're looking at is where FDR is going to go, the county and Cody Holdings or Lexington Park um, have entered into an option contract for the county to purchase that. Okay. And since I'm sitting here, um, I will go on to tell you that as part of that option contract was for the county commissioners via myself sitting here tonight are actually in support of both variances, just for what that's worth to let you know. No, but I remember in the initial discussion, we got wound around the axle only oh. to find out that nobody had that land yet at that point. Oh, in that, time. that's not the case in this one. Okay. There's, okay. there's a signed option contract, so. Okay, good enough. It's all Certainly. I'm clarifying. Who, who will be building the roundabout at, that, that's shown on the plan? <laughs> you may as well bring the applicant up, but the county will be okay. as part of FDR. Okay. Um, before 7 Eleven money, right? <laughs> <laughs> I could have gone all day without before saying that. Also, um, before you get started, hold on, please. Um, FDR Boulevard has been classified as a transportation corridor, as 235 has. Mr. Knight? Uh, you're, um, you're questioning how the land use reviewers classified the right-of-way for the application of buffer yards? That's correct. Good question. Uh, Mr. Weiber, why don't you go ahead and have a seat? <laughs> <clears throat> Do we swear you in or you're, you're I'm not going to, no, somebody else will be sworn in. I, Mr. Brown, I'm just up here to run my mouth, as Mr. Brown knows. You know, there's <laughs> members of the <laughs> board may know. Mr. Brown. He's the attorney. Okay. Usually the same one, Mark Fisher's cell tower stuff. He's Kelvin. But that's where he's. So it would appear that um, in order to be required to have the B buffer yard, to reduce this required 65 foot B buffer yard along, um, that the land use reviewers did consider um, it to be a right-of-way um, as uh, described as a public road right-of-way having a major collector or higher road classification. Now, um, I guess, you know, they're just seeking the variance now so that when that gets constructed in the future, it will have already been granted and, and the land use is accommodating them. I mean, you could say, how can you need the variance when there is no physical right of way and you're actually, but 
I mean, is that your point, Chairman? No, no. Oh, okay. I understand the right of ways there. I understand what the proposed use does. It was just the classification of the roadway as a, you indicated it would be a major um, vector or higher? No. Um, oh, well, <coughs> apparently so. Public road right of way having a major collector or higher road classification. I, you know, I have to plead ignorance on this subject. I asked the Department of Public Works um, to be here um, because they are the department who classifies roads in St. Mary's County. The Department of Land Use and Growth Management does not classify roads. Okay, well, well, the only thing that would really do is that would prevent the applicant from having to ask because it's already there. But if we're asking and we get it approved, I guess we go forward. Suppose it does get classified major collector or higher. Right, exactly. The variance is granted. Suppose it does not get classified. They have a variance they didn't need. Right, right, right. right, right. Okay. Any other questions of the board members? No. Sir. no. Okay, the applicant. Um, good evening, Paige Wyro, um, counsel on behalf of uh, the applicant. Uh, with me here tonight on Zoom is Mr. Mike Fitzgerald. Can you speak into the microphone? I'm sorry. M uh, with me tonight is Mr. F uh, Mike Fitzgerald, he's on Zoom. He's the IT director for, for Cody Holdings. I've got uh, Mr. Hosendorf, from, who's from Soltes, and I've got Mr. Dale Weems, who is the owner's representative for the construction um, of the two. Um, the existing conditions map that they showed you is a bit out of date, as Mr. Knight indicated. Um, since that photograph was taken, the Ford dealership is now open and the uh, Chevrolet dealership is well underway. But maybe um, for, th if we, excuse me, if we could, for those that will be testifying, maybe we could have them give. A, uh, I'll have them give that testimony, but I wanted to forewarn the board of, of this sort of variation on the theme for you. Okay. The statute requires um, or provides that the zoning ordinance will be only, or excuse me, a variance granted will only be good for a term of one year. That makes little sense with respect to the FDR aspect of this because it's going to be quite some time uh, before FDR will be built. So what we would ask you to do is, um, as you are empowered to do under the ordinance, is extend that period of time for a period of one year after FDR is completed. That's number one. Number two, with respect to the variance on, on 235. Um, as you may or may not know or have read, um, construction uh, material prices at this point in time because of COVID are extraordinarily <laughs> unstable and have gone well, You don't have any cars either. Well, that's true too. Um, you know, they've got cars sitting on the lot with, without computer chips, which they can't sell because there are no chips. Um, additionally, um, the lead times on orders are worse today than they were in COVID. So they are going to five to 10 times worse in, by, by some reports. Um, so they are going to do it, but what they're going to ask the board tonight to consider is a, um, an extension of instead of one year, make it um, a two year variance because they simply do not know when they're going to be able to afford to build the construction or um, having decided whether or not they will be able to build the imp or, um, improvements in a timely fashion. And that's the variance on the front of the property. On 235. Okay. So the variance in the rear would be one year after FDR Boulevard has been um, constructed <clears throat> and with respect to 235, instead of one year, a two year period. Um, they may start in the fall. Uh, I don't wanna, uh, but we just, just don't know. Uh, um, and with that, Oh, Mr. Hosendorf up here is going to give you the um, applicant's And will he be the only speaker? No, I'm going to have Mr. Weems speak to the materials um, supplies aspect, and then Mr. Mr. Fitzgerald is available for questions from the board with respect to the... Um, Maybe if we could have them all stand and again state their name, and I will then swear them in. My name is Greg Hosendorf. And you're with... And I'm with Soltes. Okay. You are? Dale Weems, and I'm with Cody Holdings. Okay, Dale Weems. Yes. And Mr. Mike Fitzgerald's with us by Zoom. Can you hear us, Mike? I can, sir. Okay, now if you all would uh, follow along with the swearing in. Please stand and raise your right hand. 
Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. And I do. then Mike. I do. Okay, very good. All right, I'll, I'll start with uh, Mr. Weems since he's closest um, to me. Mr. Weems, um, what do you do for a living? I am in construction. I've been in construction for over 40 years. Uh, I do commercial and residential. Um, and I can tell you that what we're seeing now with COVID and this industry is nothing I've ever seen before. Um, we're right. looking at eight months turnaround on garage doors. Um, we're looking at 500% increase on two befores in the last six months. Um, steel is getting unobtainable aggregate is getting unobtainable um, and it's no doesn't seem to be any end to it anytime soon um, the suppliers are telling us it's workforce they can't get the stuff produced because they don't have the manpower to catch up with what they got behind on and it just doesn't seem like it's coming around any faster than what we'd like um, I also do inspections for Calvary County sometimes and I'm doing finals on, <clears throat> excuse me, on houses over there with no dishwashers and no idea when they'll get a dishwasher. Um, and they're trying to go to settlement, no garage doors, and it's just, it's crazy right now. All right, well, um, so what is your connection with um, Cody Holdings? Uh, I'm the owner's rep. I try to take care of all of the outside um, construction day-to-day -day responsibilities of keeping the management up to date with what's going on and coordinate with the general contractors and just generally overseeing. All right. And were you um, re the owner's representative for the construction of the Ford dealership? Yes, I've been involved in the Ford dealer property since 2013 when they first began the acquisition of the properties. All right. And you know, you heard Mr. Knight acknowledge that um, the uh, aerial photograph that they took was old, was old. Has the Ford dealership now indeed been opened? Ford, ship, Ford dealership is open and we are actually putting ceiling tiles in and getting ceiling close ends done at the Chevy as we speak. The tiles going down, plumbing fixtures are going in. So that's moving along very well also, but we have run into a lot of situations along the way. Ford wasn't too bad. We started to notice it in Chevy that things were starting to be slower um, getting them. The vendors are not being upfront and honest about lead times until after you've signed the contract and then you find out that what you thought you could get it wasn't going to be a problem. Now it's now turned into a problem. And you get a two week delay on this because storefront glazing didn't show up or light metal gauge steel studs or something didn't show up or something just didn't show up because it just wasn't available. Right. Um, and it's proceeding along the same lines and continuing to look the same way. All right, and so so you're certainly not going to use a dishwasher on the lot that's currently in consideration for you know, for the board tonight. But you you reference stone. Stone's got a direct imp the availability of stone has a direct impact on what you do on that site, right? Correct. It's going to be a lot of stone, a lot of aggregate with the underground water storage construction that has to take place for the stormwater management. Even those structures. I mean, there could be delays in getting those structures made, built, and delivered on the site to be able to get it all wrapped up and done within the year's time. All right, so, so that, that would include the, the underground concrete piping and the availability of the concrete curbing, et cetera. I mean, both pricing and, and supply with respect to the actual work contemplated on that site today. Correct. That's all I've got for, for Mr. Weems. Okay, any questions? No, sir. No, I'm, I'm good with that. Okay, I, I understand that the need for to extend these variances. I understand that. Okay. All right. All right. Well, next I'd, um, well, I'll, I'll briefly, Mr. Mr. Fitzgerald, what do you do for, um, a living? <laughs> That's a $6 million question. I'm the IT director for the management company, but I'm also, um, hold on, I got a bad I'm also a uh, project manager for all the construction projects that we've done over all right, and and do, do you what it, what is Cody Holdings' current position with respect to proceeding um, of on the construction of Phase Three, which is the on the lot in front of the board tonight? Well, we'd like to do it, but like Dale said, it, the costs have just gone up 
so much. And um, we're just trying to really figure out the best path forward, maybe some value engineering or things like that. All right. Um, but is it your intention to, um, does it, Mr. Cody have an intention to build within the next two years? Yes. Thank you. Nothing else unless. Board have any questions? No. no. Mr. Vistero. No, I have just one question. It has nothing to do with the subject here. But Mr. Fitzgerald, since you're working directly for Mr. Cody, who I know is a very uh, avid UVA, if you'll notice my tie is Virginia Tech uh, alumnus, I just didn't know if you were also a UVA grad. I'm not. I'm an Air Force grad. Okay, okay. just wanted to know. Just remember, <laughs> Mr. Cody wasn't here, and I could torment him a little bit, okay? While we're commercializing, let's uh, say go Terps. <laughs> That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. uh, next, uh, call Mr. Hosendorf. <clears throat> okay, good evening. I just wanted to go through a, a quick summary of uh, the site. Um, I worked for Sotez. I'm the engineer for the job um, and worked on this um, in conjunction with uh, Jim Gotch and a couple of other engineers um, at Sotez. But We'll probably, I'm just gonna be reiterating a couple of things. Um, as was discussed earlier, the current zoning for the site is MXH, uh, mixed use, high intensity. Um, <clears throat> this current, this as we said before, this is the third phase of the uh, Lexington Park Ford. And eventually under the ultimate development, this will house a uh, third dealership as uh, Mike and uh, as Dale has spoken before that we're looking to you know, phase that, bring that along gradually based on the cost and availabilities of materials. But this site in the ultimate condition is looking to house a third dealership. Um, as spoken before, we are requesting two variances. So the first, just a, a little bit of clarity, the, the variance that is along 235, it is a 30 foot buffer yard C. And then on the rear portion, it would be a 30 foot buffer yard A that would abut uh, FDR Boulevard. Um, the difference between the A and the C is just the density of the plantings within the buffer yard. Um, just as a description of the site, Harry, when he, uh, he had the, the plan view earlier and you could see that FDR Boulevard does bisect the site um, it, it intersects the site and a part of what we're asking for the variance to get the reduced buffers is because once FDR Boulevard goes through having the 65 foot buffer yard on both sides of the site creates part, partly creates a hardship and reduces the amount that could be developed. So with that, the 30 foot buffer yard that is reduced, it would allow us to have a smaller buffer yard, but also to get the stormwater management that is necessary for the development of the future phase in the rear. Let's see. Oh, as, as mentioned previously, there is an options contract between the developer and St. Mary's County for the future FDR Boulevard extension which the which St. Mary's County has agreed to support um, the buffer reduction variance. Um, and lastly, the uh, the requested reduced buffer yards, they are consistent with the buffers that are already along 235. Um, as it was mentioned previously, we already had a reduced 30 foot buffer to the west, I, I, yes, uh, to the west or to the northwest of our location that was already approved. So when we, the 30 foot buffer yard C along 235 that we are requesting, it would match that same buffer that's already there. Um, and as well as the properties that are along, uh, that would be along the, the FDR Boulevard alignment. Uh, let me stop you there, Mr. Osendorf. I know you've repeated the, the next part of your um, PowerPoint has got the seven criterion that the board's got to consider for the variance. I don't think they need to hear them for the third time tonight, but, but you're familiar, um, are you not, with the um, applicant's presentation, I mean, letter to the board 
or to the land use and growth management dated March 11th in which all the um, uh, factual um, statements are made that address the seven criteria and require. You're familiar with that letter? Yes, sir. All right, and do you adopt the factual representations in that letter as your testimony here? Can you speak into the microphone? I'm sorry, do you adopt those, the factual representations in that? Yes, sir. Letter as your testimony tonight. Thank you. Um, that'd be the applicant's presentation. Questions of the board? Um, under, no, it's under construction, but have you installed any of the buffer yet? Please? No. No, no none no, of the buffers. Not on been, that section, not on phase three. No, not, what about in phase, in the other two? The, oh, the, the other sections in the, in the other two, on phase one and phase two, Ford and Chevy, yes. Yes. I, but you don't have any pictures or, or anything or presentation? No, I, I did not bring any pictures of the existing buffer or what it looks like. Um, I didn't have that with me. It was inspected and looked. Okay. Well, go ahead. Has it been inspected? I think it's in the process of the. Yes, it's in, been in the process of getting the bonds and all released on the vegetation and the buffers and everything on those two sections now. I'm just wondering if you had anything. Well, I mean, we're, as, a, as a condition to get use and occupancy, does that work have to be completed? Yes. I know. I just wanted to see yes. what it looked like. Uh, uh, we're not allowed to visit the site, so. Well, I just wanted to see how many cars are parked up on the buffer. There you go. <laughs> I mean, that's the, we sit here as a board and argue over what size buffer it ought to be. And then when the place gets built, we have cars sitting on the sidewalk, which I don't know who in this county enforces that, but it kind of like, almost renders this stuff moot when you see how it's implemented. Well, I'm not testifying, but I was there a couple days ago and there were no cars parked on the side. <laughs> Even though your people across the street may have, right? <laughs> I wasn't looking at so I'm not going to cast aspersions on somebody else, so I wasn't looking for them. Now, Cody we, may own that, too. I'm not sure. <laughs> no, I don't we do have some display parking sites that were approved in the site plan up by two guys. <laughs> so you may see some out there, but... Okay, I, it's just a, another zinger, sort of like a Virginia Tech barb here. Ed. Mr. Richardson. <laughs> yeah, on the buffer on 235, it's just a continuation of what's already there. Is that correct? That is correct, and I think that's pretty uniform with the other auto dealers on the way down 235 also. Okay, and I thank you, but let's go to the buffer on 235, on, on uh, FDR. And the, what I'm looking at is a roundabout. And as you're coming from your property, you have to turn right on the roundabout. Does that buffer obstruct your view for oncoming cars? No, I think that um, Public Works and everybody looked at that in the plan and thought that we, or determined that we had adequate sight distance on all of that. So just maybe, yes. Huh. Harry, can you pull it up there in the bottom right hand, there is, right in the center of the picture? It, is this the right picture, sir? Yes, it is. And you see the roundabout? I do. Okay, coming from the south partial going to a roundabout, you, you automatically have to take a right-hand turn. Does the buffer, either one of the buffers, block the view from the oncoming traffic from the left? Did I explain it correctly? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Um, typically, when, you, when you're looking at the layout and the design for that, they, they as the, a part of the engineering process, you have to analyze the sight distance, and whenever you draw your sight distance line, usually they provide an easement, but because that is already within the right-of-way, the buffer would be outside of the right-of-way. It shouldn't, pre it, it shouldn't, and I'm just, I'm eyeballing it from here, but it should not, the angle of the intersection, it should not present any kind of visual obstructions based on what's in the right-of-way. Yeah. And I would, yeah, I would add that, <clears throat> um, it's, it may be hard for you to see it up on the screen. I have to get close to see it myself. But the sidewalk, so the actual travel lane is deeper in the right of way. And then there will be a sidewalk in the right of way. And then a little more green space 
before you even get to the property line that you measure the 30 feet from. Okay, Correct. so you don't think that there's the buffer would obstruct your view for oncoming traffic? No, sir. It, and and once, once we say when we get to the phase four development, we would, a part of the review with DPW, they would make us show the site distance. And then if there was any, any obstruction or anything in that line of sight, we have to provide a site distance easement to say, well, this portion of the buffer would not be planted. Okay, thank you. You, you explained it well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, and I'd just, for the, for the record, I'd add during the, and I think Mr. Weisskopf will agree, there were some pretty thorough back and forth on the engineering of that roundabout that went into the option agreement because that, that roundabout needed to be engineered to a significant degree before we could reach an agreement on the option mm -hmm. agreement. That's so correct. DPW and Soltes worked for four or five months on refining the design of that roundabout before we finalized that agreement. So you're confident that's where the roundabout's gonna be? You gotta move your mic. I'm sorry? Confident that's where the roundabout's gonna be? That the, the <laughs> <laughs> sorry, the, the, typically I speak so loud people can hear me. Um, what? It, <laughs> that is that is where the roundabout's going to be. That is that is what the agreement provides. That's what DPW is agreed upon. That's what Cody's agreed upon. So that's where it's going to go. Okay, thank you. So the county's plans are to a point where they're they're finished. They're happy. They got all the slope easements. Everything's everything's dandy. That's what the agree. That's what the option agreement provided addresses all those all those easements that were required from Cody to build that roundabout are in place under the option agreement. Any other questions? Be... Any other comments? Nothing else. We'd ask you to favorably consider the extension of the two um, variance time periods for the two variances involved. You're, you're asking for a, a, a two year option on the 235. Uh, on 235. Front. One year but you're, from but you're one year for an open end option on the Well one year from one year from the date of completion, there's a there's a there is a time schedule which is contemplated for the construction of FDR that's contained in the option agreement. And it covers a wide period of time to give the county the flexibility that they need. And they may be as impacted given some conversations I had with Mr. Weisskopf before the hearing, as much by the construction cost problems on the construction as we are. So we don't know when it's gonna be built and when FDR is gonna be built and certainly they don't wanna spend the money on putting plantings in place if there's gonna be contractors coming up and down running their trucks, et cetera, during the construction of, of FDR Boulevard. So I know it's a bit vague, but as you know, the, the, our option agreement contemplates it will be completed within a specified period of time, w which is really kind of open-ended. And Mr. Weisskopf shaking his head or nodding his head over there, I think he agrees. So it, one year from the date FDR Boulevard is, is completed across Cody's property is the best that I can do. What do, what do we want to call completed? Well, substantially completed. How and about open to traffic? I mean, what do you? I think the, the intent would be to try to work with the county with their road plans and our plans to have it all come together so that it's not counterproductive on either part. I understand that, but I think for what we're going to propose a motion on, hopefully for your sake, is that you know we need to define. I think completion it, is it completion of asphalt, open to traffic, 100% um, completion, contract release. Uh, Mr. Mr. Weisskopf says asphalt, and I think, does that work? I th yeah, I think so. I'd suggest open to traffic, but that's not my place to... <laughs> that would give you more time. Uh, if, if you want to do open to traffic, Mr. Weisskopf's saying that's okay. fine with him. And then I, I, would, I would say that's the intent of the zoning ordinance. We're supposed to be buffering the traffic. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then the, 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 on the back of the property, the buffer that we're talking about is just phase three 
that, that, that backs up to the back of phase That's three. That's correct. It is not across on the other side of FDR Boulevard. That is correct. Okay. They don't know what they're going to do with that property and they can't propose a buffer to you today. Okay. Well, I have no problem at all with, on in 235, but on the FDR, I just don't like open-end contracts, open-end ideas, but if it's only a buffer, uh, I could probably go along with it. But other, other than that, I just don't like open-end ideas okay. at all. Well, it should be a sunset clause and everything. I appreciate that it's the, the, the concern, and I'd, I'd agree with you, but then again, by the same token, the quandary that Cody faces is, is that our option agreement with respect to the construction is open-ended to some degree as well. So we're, we're beholden to what the county does and doesn't do with respect to the construction of the FDR. Well, I think agreeing to open to traffic clarifies that mm -hmm. at least a little bit. Yeah. Thank you. And they are asking for, correct me if I'm wrong, one one year from open to That's traffic. That's correct. Right. Yeah. So there is a there is a sunset date. Yeah, so they have a year to finish completion, do punch list items, those sorts of things. So that's I think that's reasonable. Yeah. And you being an old PW type, I know mm -hmm. you understand. <laughs> yeah, for a buffer, I, I I can I can go along with it. But anything else, I don't like open end open end mm -hmm. ideas. You should have a sunset clause and everything. Okay. Any other questions from the board members? No, okay, I'll open no. the meeting to public comment. Anybody in the audience want to speak for or against the proposal? <coughs> yes, ma'am. Um, okay, um, we, I guess we are in. Uh, well, 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 well. We need you to come to a microphone. Maybe we'll bring up where you want to. Okay. Like seat to, there. Oh, there. okay. If you hold before you before you before you sit down, would you ask it? Thank you very much. Would you raise the right hand? Um, and do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you will give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Would you state your name and where you, and your address for the record? Eve Taylor, and I live at 22441 Cornwall Drive, California, Maryland, which is in San Sushi, and which uh, for it is right down from us before I have to enter into the development. I was really trying to keep up because I'm a layman to all this, but I was interested to see where further FDR Boulevard is going, and I was interested in seeing where from this picture, where the entrance, but I can see because I see Helsley, and Helsley is further down in the front. So from what my perspective, again, being a layman, it seems as though if you put in that FDR Boulevard, you're actually talking about getting rid of some of the houses that are closer to McKay's now. It used to be uh, Shoppers, now it's McKay's. So those people there, which I know every single one of them, because I have a nonprofit ministry and I feed a lot of them, it's going to be taken down, those houses. To put in the, if, you, if, if I'm getting this correct, you know, that's your department, not mine. Yeah, the, the, the uh, proposal before the board is um, variances from a future FDR Boulevard and the property that they're requesting the variance on um, does not contain any houses at this time. At this time. Correct. And, and we are talking closer to McKay's parking lot in the back, not in the front. That's n well, that's not the section of FDR Boulevard that is being discussed this evening. But it is in further back. Um, FDR Boulevard is anticipated to run all the way to Lexington Park eventually. Interesting. Okay, so, um, well, then my comment is uh, I have been into the dealership already. I've, been, I've gone in there, and it, it's very beautiful. Ma'am, I'm sorry to interrupt, but why don't you sit down so you can okay. speak more comfortably to the microphone? Yeah, I don't want to take his spot. <laughs> 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 I'll leave it to you. Get in trouble with that mic. So, um, yeah, I've been at the dealership, and it, and it is lovely. It's nice. Um, our concern was with the traffic, because we do have the right-of-way, you know, to where we can go further right to get into our development. I mean, so far, it's not been packed, but it, they've had quite a bit of business, and there's a lot of cars there. And um, I don't perceive where I can see any trouble. I have no problems with what they're going to do. I just really want to just get clarification of where the FDR Boulevard was going to go run through. So whatever they want to do, I'm all in for it. 
um, they classified me as care of San Sushi Association. So I guess we're gonna say, yeah, we're for it. And whatever they'd like to do to make it happen, because it is beautiful, and I think it will bring a lot of business, you know. Um, and as far as the traffic, if it keeps up the way it is right now, I don't foresee any trouble. So I think it's a nice projected proposal that they're giving you. That's all I have to say for San Sushi Association. <laughs> any questions of the board? No. No. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other comments from the audience? Any comments on the phone? We shall see. Ms. Young, the public hearing has been open to public comment. Do you have any callers? There are no callers at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'll close the meeting to public comment and open it up for board discussion. Well, like Mr. Brown, we've had this all before, and it really upsets me when I drive along and I see vehicles right over the sidewalk. They, they're the, the A buffers, I, I will never be in favor of another A buffer. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, not for a car dealership because they literally, they'll drive them right up on top of the rocks or whatever it is. I'm, I'm you know, I feel sorry for, but I'm, I'm just not in favor of that. But the, the front buffer on 235, that's a 30 foot C. Well, that's good and fine. But the one on the back is a 30-foot A. I'm, I'm not in favor of a 30-foot A. I I'm, I'm prefer C. I'm just saying. I get tired of looking at vehicles. Well, it's just my, making a scoff law the whole process. And my me. question is, who's, whose job is it to enforce? I, I, you well, know, I, I can't. lug them, the police department, the commissioners? Property owner? What's, what's the purpose? I mean, I don't understand. That's what I'm, bothers me. I know, but the C buffer is a little more preventative. Yeah, I understand what you're A. saying. And it's 30 foot. That's to me. That's the biggest concern. It's not 65 foot. It's not cumbersome, but I, you know, may prevent some of that. That's my comment. Well, the, the, the proposal is to have a 30 foot buffer on both the front and the back. It's just a matter of plantings. Right. The front is C. And they're proposing A on the back. And I'm, want to double. I'm, I'm in agreement with that. But as far as the, uh, you know, the one year after FDR is completed, I'm I'm good with that. And the two year on the front 235, I'm good with that. Just okay. Yo, go ahead. <laughs> That's where I'm at. Any other comments? Questions? Somebody want to try a motion? Oh, I, I'll go through it, but uh, with the conditions, and I don't know if we're still going to have a discussion or just put it through and we'll see have, how we'll the vote is. Okay. Let's, let's get something. Okay. Out. In the matter of VAP 20-131-027, Lexington Park Board, Phase 3, having made a finding that the standards for granting a variance and the objectives of Section 63.3, buffer yards and get my right column here, buffer yards and schedule 63.3A, buffer yard standards of the St. Mary's County Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance have been met. I move to approve the variance request to reduce the required 65 foot type B buffer yard along Maryland routes 235 to a 30 foot type C buffer yard and to reduce the required 65 foot type B buffer yard along FDR Boulevard to a 30 foot type A buffer yard. Uh, up with the following conditions. One, that would the uh, FDR buffer would be completed one year after the, uh, completion and opening to traffic on FDR Boulevard through that, inter through that property and a two-year variance on 235 due to issues associated when mater obtaining materials. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Discussion? 
Well, I, I so said we, my piece. I'm not. You've said your piece, but I'm I not, mean, I, I I'm don't in favor of the first part, but not the right. second part. I understand part. what you're saying. So would you have to but, separate those two? But I'm also two? saying, if nobody's going to enforce it, they're going to park their cars any damn where they want to. That's the problem. Well, that's no reason for us to right. to not. Tr at well, least well tr what we're doing try. is trying to put a few obstacles to this right. in there. That, that's no reason for us not to try. From when I looked at that, that's a, a storage spot rather than advertising cars. Am, am I correct in that? Yeah, you're correct. That's our plans for that. So that, 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 that part of FER is more for storage of cars and parking of cars and not for display, if that's my understanding. You correct. really think all those cars that are going up FER Boulevard, they're not going to display something? I'm I'm sorry. Their, their they're proposal. Display something. No, I'm, I'm looking at their, their proposal is, is that storage and not display. No. Yeah. They're going to display. So you would you would prefer a 30 foot buffer in but, the back, but, but, but a C buffer, but a C, C buffer, buffer. Yes. With with so that would end up three more three more canopy trees, three more understory trees. 14 evergreens and shrubs, 17 more shrubs per thousand square feet, and a berm and a fence. Yep. Okay. And it's, it is zoned MD, MH and H. So I'm sorry, go ahead, I, I interrupted. No, I'll just say, but, but I thought they were, I thought the, the, let me go back a second. I thought the buffer in the front, the C buffer that was being proposed was also without a berm. Well, I don't need the berm or the fence. I don't see that in the C buffer that's on the. Greg, am I that's, correct on that? that's presented here. I don't see a, a fence or. A, it doesn't. It doesn't say that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm not in favor of the the berm or the fence. Okay. I'm saying we'll go back to a C buffer. I don't, I'm not sure the C buffer that we approved before has a berm or okay, So what's in front, we do in the back. Correct. Mm -hmm. What we do on the front on 235, you want to do the back from FDR. Right. Yes. I'm not sure. Maybe they know. When we approved that the... Uh... Greg, go ahead. Yes, just to clarify, um, if I'm understanding right, you're wondering, does the, the buffer yard C contain a fence or a berm? Yes. Yes, that in the standard detail, it shows that, but there's only certain sections of the zoning ordinance that it'll specify when a fence or a berm is needed. But the one, the, the buffer yard C that we are showing on our plans and that we're requesting, it would not include a fence or, or, or burn. Yeah, and yeah. that's correct. <clears throat> you have to, when you look at the schedule, so before you get to the pictures, you look at the schedule. Mm -hmm. um, there are footnotes associated with the fence and berm, and it explains that only certain uses specify the need for a fence or berm, and this use does not. I, I was this pretty use does not? Does not. Okay. I was pretty sure that it wasn't okay, a fence okay. or a berm before, and so really, we're talking about a few more trees. A few more trees, That's shrubberies. And yes. Yes. Well, actually, it was a double A, right? So that would, in fact, be one more tree than the than a C, or the yeah. Well, an A is calling for four understory trees, and they're suggesting a double. What, where's that at? Where's the double A at? Double. I thought they wanted a, a... Where did that come okay, from? Okay, okay. I think on one slide somebody said two times. So, but in reality, you're just saying the space, but you only want four trees in that space. Okay, enough said. Clarified. Okay. I was asleep. So we're saying three more trees and, uh, well, and, and yeah. double the shrubs. So we're going to modify, we're going to amend... The motion to be a C buffer yard 
with and planting on the back property line. For the FDR, FDR for the FDR Boulevard. Right. And that is 30 feet, is that correct? Yes, okay. yes. And that's I, I understand it's 65 feet. I'm, I'm, I'm all for that. I'm just trying to stop some of the shenanigans. Can, can I speak to that? For okay. <laughs> The shenanigans Wait, part? Well, well, <laughs> no, no, well, I understand the shenanigans part, but, but what you're doing is you are, FDR Boulevard is going to be, it's going to go where it's going to go, and all these existing lots are already there, and those people are going to do whatever they want, and this board's not going to be able to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. And you are taking one lot, one owner, and you're trying to make an example of him for what every other car dealer is doing in different places by trying to change the rules and apply the standards differently under the certain circumstances to address Mr. Mazinski's concern, which I understand, but you're killing a gnat with a sledgehammer and, you're pu and you are treating them, dis Cody, disparately from the way other people have been treated. So I'd urge you to reconsider the path you're going down you don't like what they what what's going on with it? Then tell zoning to enforce the rules. Thank you. The, the and I would just speak zoning. up a little bit on behalf of the county that's in support of this. And part of the reason is because I believe if you look at the slide that was shown where FDR goes, it's about based on that and stormwater management. I think the county took about three and a half acres from Cody's property. So we you know the county's taken three and a half acres. We've also, you know, if you put this, you know, large uh, buffer yard on both sides of what we, you know, of what we've already taken, then we've really, really done some damage to this uh, small businessman. We're business not changing man. the size of the buffer yard. You're changing the, right. The density of the. Yeah, density. And that's just one, one. The, the, what they asked for in the first one, we're completely right. fine just, with. No, it's just additional plantings. Right. Well, you you talk about going, I think it's going from 10 shrubs to 27 shrubs. I mean, that's a, that's a large difference, but that's what the board is here for. I was just giving you the county's perspective. And, and, <laughs> and from my perspective, how does it accomplish what you're talking about, um, your, your concern? Because everybody else is going to keep on doing what they're doing if zoning doesn't enforce it, number one. And number two, when FDR is built along the backside of all those other existing dealerships, you've imposed a, a additional requirement on Cody that you're not going to impose on those other people. You're trying to fix a problem that exists today before your approval of this one way or the other. Well, really with Cody, we're not imposing anything on him. We're giving him a variance of what is required. I, I understand that, but in, in the face of a similar variance granted to other dealerships up and down this, this drag that you are, <laughs> and those people apparently, or there's a concern that they're violating existing rules, so instead of enforcing those existing rules, you want to impose a condition on Cody that you haven't imposed on anybody else. I don't, I don't None, who else has that, come before and asked for that? That's really. not really what's going on. The A buffer doesn't prevent or stop from driving whatever vehicle you want up there. The C buffer will. But, but if, if, if other people have been allowed to use an A buffer in similar circumstances and you've decided that you're irritated because they're driving uh, vehicles up on sidewalks and leaving them there, this change in approach doesn't solve that problem. And it solves it on one lot on proposed FDR Boulevard that will have no impact on what anybody else does on FD, FDR Boulevard. I they will be able to take their cars and push them to the curb or push them to the side of the curb with, with people driving down them because there are no planning requirements that are going to be imposed on these people in connection with the construction of FDR Boulevard. I can't stop what's happened in the past. I, under, I, I understand that. But, but Look at what I have here tonight. Understand, but I don't, it's, 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 I don't, th it, I don't think it solves your problem. And, and the way to solve your problem is to, is to direct that the zoning laws be enforced. 
or suggest to the county commissioners that that's what they do. Thank you. Well, as, as one voting member, I, as one voting member, I happen to agree with Mr. Warro. I, I see it as an enforcement issue, i.e., the commissioners, and not an issue of, shall we say, legislative, and that's what we are semi semi doing when we set up this criteria. So, uh, anyway, that's where I'm coming from. So, I don't know whether we'll go to a vote, either split it apart or do a vote on one and then vote on the other and see how we make out. There was a motion with a second. Yes. I, that's uh, right. Yeah. And, and that's where we are. The, that's where we are. I understand. I, okay. And the question is, is do we want to modify that? And I have heard nobody make a suggestion that we modify that. Well, you can go with the one vote, and if that passes, it's done. If it doesn't pass, okay. then we'll have okay. to. Um, so we okay. have a motion on the floor. It's been so discussed. What, so what, what is the motion on the floor? Is, is it a 30-foot A or a 30-foot C? I believe the motion on the floor was as written by staff to. Um, yes. Yeah. C? Yes. 30 foot it, the, A. C, yeah, C the, thir a. the 30 foot C on Route 235 and the 30 foot A on FDR Boulevard. Right. Correct. With the time period as requested. Yes. I second. We have this motion. Yeah, we second. had the second. Okay, yeah. let's go for a vote. Mr. Richardson. Yes. Y yes. Yes. No. Yes. Okay. Well, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Motion. The motion passes. Um, for the applicant, I would like to remind you, if I find it, that an order reflecting the board's decision will be prepared by staff and signed by the board within 60 days. A 30-day period follows from that date. The order is signed during which any aggrieved party may appeal the board's decision to circuit court. The recording secretary will mail you a copy of the order when it has been completed and signed. Again, thank you for your presentation. Good luck with your project. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. One part. Pardon me? No, the fun part. Fun part? So is that, is that mine or yours? No, is that mine or yours? Mine. Got yellow on it, I'm sure. Okay. First of all, we have uh, two minutes meeting meeting minutes to approve. The first is for May 13th, 2021, the Board of Appeals meeting minutes. I have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Then we have uh, the May 20th, 2021, Board of Appeals special work session meeting minutes and again i'll take a motion to approve those or make corrections Please, make motion to approve it second second all in favor aye okay that motion carries now we have one two three four of four uh, orders to sign the first is for vaap 210149 arid property order which one is it now Oh, the Herod property. That's the one, Mr. Chairman, I have some comments. Okay. Uh, I guess coming in would be the one, two, third page, or actually the fourth page. And I'm trying to define it. I guess that it's got 1,100 at the bottom. Yeah, 1100. If... Uh, I would say here it says both the down at the bottom just above decision it says both the pool owner and applicant share concerns I think it's probably what the pool builder and applicant shell concerns because I think the pool owner and applicants are the same the idea of reducing it to 12 feet mm -hmm. as opposed to 15 right, right, right. feet I think that's a one word correction that needs to be put in there okay I would then go back over two pages well then the first next question it shows up on two orders but doesn't show up on the other two and this is you lawyers please explain to me what it means you've got 
id just before, before findings, and you got id at 214-15 at the very end of those bullets, and you have this on another order, but then you, it's, it's like it's a stray that got left in the, in the printing. Was that intended to be there or not intended to be there? I don't have those orders, but Ed, ID, uh, it's Latin. It just basically refers you to another page or previously above it. It's a reference to somewhere else in the document. Well, maybe the gentleman who prepared it could answer the question. <laughs> because it's in two of the orders, but the other orders they're not. So I was looking for consistency. Hi, everyone. Neil Murphy, Deputy County Attorney. Which uh, order is so okay, still in the Herod property order? For the Herod property at 1102, page 1102, the item, uh, this concern is, it says id at 2214-15. And it seems to not connect to the paragraph above right. or, or the paragraph below. You can take a look at that and then correct it. Okay, and it, there's an id also just before the findings on the pr previous page. I, it looks like it's just got le accidentally I left I, in. I, yeah, I, without uh, looking Okay, at and then, then I would be being real picky. I'm like playing your English teacher here now back in 10th grade. Uh, you... Below that id, there's a paragraph where you say specifically the particular physical conditions of the property are as follows, colon. And you leave out the word, I would assume, be first comma, the existing lot is only 174, because you number every other one of your conditions. You, you don't do it there, but mm. below that, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, you do. It's sort of like a word got left out, okay? Okay, sure. And, and that's, that's the only the English. Excuse term. me for being nitpicky. Oh, no, no, that's fine. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. So that's the Keep heritage. Honest. Yeah. Do we want you? I mean, I don't mind you approving subject to correcting. That's what I was letting, allowing you to yeah, sign I, it. I'll whenever. certainly do that. And I think also. Because it's Steve, not changing any meanings. For, yeah, it's, it's um, form, not substance. So the thing is. I think Steve Scott also needs to sign them, so this will also give him a chance to sign. Uh, uh, come by. I don't know when he would tomorrow, sign them. Tomorrow, I he, think. Okay. Or, yeah. What, yeah. Whatever works. I think probably Sherry he can. She can maybe forward the signed version to him with those changes, and then because uh, I, I wouldn't be you wouldn't be I wouldn't be changing the portion where you sign it, and then all the other parts you can just change. I think. But yeah, it should be fine. And, and looking at the corrections, it shouldn't cause you to right, change exactly. pages. I don't okay. think so either. Yeah, I think it should be fine. So there's so we need a motion to sign this with those. So mo so move, Mr. Chairman, move that the chairman be allowed to I'm sign, sign it. it tonight. Okay, sign it at, with the subject corrections being made. Certainly. Okay. Or previously Second. noted corrections. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. I told you. And the next one is Bakhaja property. No, I think that has the id in it also. And this was a disturbance of the critical area buffer and non-tidal wetlands uh, to construct a single family house. And we remember it was very Moved, the house was moved very close to the front property line and uh, really did the best they could to avoid the rest of the okay. uh, wetlands and critical area. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that one t likewise, page 1112 and also page 1114, has got that id part in it on the side there, which it doesn't look like it right, is it's part of the paragraph, okay? It's been a and I, everything else, I'll error, I keep my that. mouth shut. Oh, no, no problem. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I'll take Brown. a motion for me to sign the Bakaja property um, orders with those corrections. So moved. Second. Aye. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The third one we have is Chaptico substation, the Smeco substation over in Chaptico. Uh, Mr. Chairman, here I go again. 
on a page 1123, up in the first paragraph. And I'm just looking really for meaning here because I don't really quite remember, but it says construction will take place over 2020 through 2021, and the project will be completed in 2022. Mm -hmm. uh, this was just approved last week. Is There's construction a, yeah, was, already yeah. taken place? No, I don't believe so. I think, I think you're correct. I think it should have been uh, construction will take place over 21 to 22 and should be done in 22. I think it was just a numbers there on the keypad, but I appreciate you. Okay, that. that's the only thing. That's that how I, I, that's how I remember it as well is the 21 to 22. Thank you. Unless they had already started construction. I don't believe so. I don't believe they have. They, they, hmm, I don't think so. If they did, then it's something unrelated to what they needed to come before <clears throat> us for. And, but I can't remember. I'll just, I'll rewatch the tape and, okay. and say. But they, they had been, you know, However, the electric company looks at it. They've been working on this project and work's been going on to get things done well before you know, the presentation. They may have done clearing. But, then the it might, then it might actually be correct. I, I'll, could, I'll take a look at the tapes. Could be they were referring to design work as but part of the But they're referring to work. the project yeah, you know, in the say, paragraph. So that's why I... It's construction. No, I appreciate it. I'll double check. Thank you, Mr. Brown. I appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. Do we want to make a motion upon that correction also? If need be. I don't know that it so moved. Second. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Okay, the third one, the fourth one, or last one we've got is the greenery for the medical marijuana processing facility um, in Hollywood. It's crazy. Any changes on that one? <laughs> <laughs> I'm quiet. I make a motion to sign it, sir. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, um, before we adjourn, I will not be able to make it here on the July meeting. Um, having a little bit of surgery done. And Mr. Brown, as we think, is still on the Board of Appeals because the county commissioners have not made a replacement appointment. So he will more than likely serve as chairman for that meeting since he is uh, vice chair right now. You will also, it sounds like you will also only have four members at that meeting because Mr. Guy also will be Still out of all. town. <laughs> Always. <laughs> he will be out of town and um, so he will not be available also. So you may want to let the applicants know that they all will have only four members and could be subject to a tie vote. That's what we normally do and then leave it up to the applicants as Correct. to whether or not they want to continue it until they right. can have five. Because certainly if it's, you know, a controversial case or, you know, something out of the ordinary. They will ask for a, a, a Yes, day. I mean, because 4-2-2 two, two would be a. Be a loss. Would right. be a loss. Right. right. It's not an approval. Anything else for the good of the cause? No. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all very much. Good meeting. You're tired, oh, aren't you? Don't forget me. Mm -hmm. I said, you're tired, aren't you?